and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today we are going to show you how to self-correct. That means you're going to do it a high hip in 60 seconds. This is a pretty simple process. We're going to show you how to try to determine whether or not you have a longer leg on one side. But if you can't do it, don't worry. We'll have other options here. You look like you're confused, Brad. Well, you, uh, well, if they're a little confused, I am. That's okay. You're going to take care of the I'll confusion. clear it up. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, go to our website, bobandbrad.com, because we're usually doing a giveaway, but the giveaway is not today. It'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, go, go to Facebook. It'll, the giveaway will be pinned to the top of the page. You check it out at noon tomorrow noon. on Sunday. Go to Instagram, TikTok, Instagram. or Twitter if you want a 60-second version of our program. So a lot of people, Brad, feel like one of their legs is longer. Now, there's three possibilities. One, they they might actually have a longer leg. Right. Or two, they, after like a hip or knee replacement, you get that sense like that one side is longer. But sure. quite often, it's not. Right. So... I, we're going to show you. number three? I, I really wasn't three. It was two two tests. I don't know where I came up with the three. But can't you have a little shift in your SI joint? Yes. That was number well, three. Oh, Bob. That's why your I'm SI here. Could, yeah, you, help, you, see, you bailed me out. Your SI could be a little bit off. It'll, it'll actually make it feel like it's longer. Sure. And right. So let's let's go the, the, look at the first way. We've got kind of two tests that you can do to determine whether or not one hip is longer. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to do these because it's, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, it takes a little practice. A little, you know, that's why they have therapy schools and stuff right. like that. <laughs> that's what keeps us in business. So right. the first thing you can do is just looking in the mirror. If you look at a spine here or full skeleton here, Sam, look at his pelvis here. So these are the iliums. And actually, it looks like his left side is a little higher than his right, doesn't it? Well, just a little, there you go. There, <laughs> yeah. not anymore. Not anymore. So what you're going to do is you're going to dig into your abdomen here, and you're going to find the top of these bones. If your leg is longer or this uh, this ilium is rotated, mm -hmm. it could appear to be longer too. So th that's the first sign. You're going to go ahead and just look in the mirror, stick your hands in here, and see if they're level or not. If they're level... Most likely you have, you're even, you have normal legs, you have normal SI. Even, Stephen. I just wanted to show the, the viewers that here is that pelvis and here's that SI joint. And if you can go in, what happens is, you see that movement? Ooh. Yeah. It, if it rotates, it appears to be higher. Yeah. So if just, a, and there is not, it doesn't take much movement at all to cause pain. Uh, and discomfort. So there's a possibility that there's a shift there. Yeah. So we're looking at two things here. You know, not one is not you. Basically, you're going to self-correct because it looks high. Mm -hmm. But really, the more important reason why you might want to self-correct is because it hurts, causing pain. Yes. Right. So the way a, a therapist would do it, Brad, if you want to lay down real quick. Here, well, of course. Now, what we can do is. And you see a lot of chiropractors do this and stuff. And there's Brad's yellow gaudy socks. They're not yellow. They're chartreuse. Just, <laughs> that way chartreuse. People, the people can see very clearly. All right. So anyway, I'm going to put my thumbs right on his ankle bones on the inner side here. And I'm going to look to see if they're even or not. And right now they appear to be pretty even, Brad. But you got to be careful because I could just shift like this. Yeah. And one could be longer. Right. So there's a little, you kind of have to. That's where it takes some practice. As right. A, a and then he, I have them sit up. And they all change. If they still stay level, we're fine. If one is longer and one is shorter after that, you might have some of the issues going on with your pelvis. I'm not going to say any more than that, Brad. Yeah. If, if one is long laying down and long sitting up, that probably is a long leg then. So you have to have someone, yeah. a second person, and uh, that's why it's yeah. not easy to do. Right. But you can still do the treatment and we're going to talk about that and be successful without the second person. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to assume you don't know which leg is longer. Right. Uh, but you're having some SI issues because of a long leg. So we're going to go. Why don't you sit up? Or do you want to do it, Brad? I want to do it. That's oh, why okay. I, I didn't want to get up. 
All right, what you're going to do is you're going to take a broomstick or a pole or a booyah stick, and you're going to put it, if you think you suspect that this is the longer leg, you're going to put this one underneath the longer leg and above the shorter leg, above the thigh of the shorter leg. You're going to bring so, it up to this. Yeah, I'll show them this. Yeah. From, from, so from this angle, it looks like this. Right. And you're going to have your hips at about 90 degrees, which is a right angle. And all you're going to do is you're going to push down with this one while you're pushing up with this one. At the same time, it's isometric, so you're not really going to get any movement, but you're going to count to five while you do it. And I'm going to hold the stick with my hold the stick, yeah. So the stick isn't going to move like Stick's this. Stick's not going to move. Yeah, don't watch out there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Whoa. Oh, I almost got a cramp. Okay, ready? Yep. And... One, two, three, four, five. You're going to do that five times. Now, what I'm looking for on this, does it feel better? Does this feel right? You know, when you do this. It feels okay, Bob. Okay. I do have a right-sided SI thing that does give me issues. Let's it's, see. I thought I saw that a little bit when we were testing you before. Yeah. Let's so let's try the other side. So now he's going to put it underneath. Maybe suspect this leg is longer and this leg is shorter. Let's try this one. And again, this is for you if you're if you're having that pelvic pain or SI pain. Give this a try. So it's kind of like a scissors with your legs, but you're right preventing that movement. Brad scissor legs. So it'll be a new movie. Well, no, either for me, either direction does not create any obvious pain or any relief either. Well, I would say this feels more comfortable, even though the other one doesn't create pain. This one feels better. Sure. Which makes sense because that's the one I always deal with when gotcha. I self-treat. I have a, a little bit different system, but I think it's similar in uh, mechanical mechanics. But we won't want to go now, there. Now, yeah, the other thing you can do is um, you can actually, right when you finish up, you put two fists, fists between your legs and, yep, and like you that. squeeze the legs together. This kind of just resets the pubic symphysis. How many times? I, I would also do it five times. Five times, hold yeah. five seconds. Yeah. So, I, again, it's isometric. Isometric. And right. those muscles directly connect to the pelvis, and it makes sense that that is doing some. The other way you can go at it, Brad, if you want to lay down oh, one yeah. more time, is you can actually you can actually take one leg off the edge of the bed oh, like this. Yeah. And take it off, and this one pull up, and you're going to kind of rock it back and forth. This is the same thing. Which side feels better? Does this feel better? If not, maybe try the other. So the other leg's going to go off the edge. There you go. And there you go. You know, actually, this is one of those stretches that probably people will benefit one way or another. Right. You know, it's just a good stretch. It, it's your, a good stretch. You it's really, your, yeah. Your hip flexor gets stretched out. It's you, getting movement at your SI. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's really a pretty harmless one right so I, I think it's a pretty safe one to do let's say for example you discover that you definitely have one leg that's longer than the other sure where did i put my oh here it is into my pocket oh <laughs> what do you got a tape measure nope oh uh let's say you discover that one leg is definitely longer especially if it's like a half inch longer mm -hmm. now it's very not it's very not it's not very unusual to have one leg longer than the other by the way right i, I find it quite often in people maybe a quarter inch, sometimes a half inch. If it's like a half inch and they're having pain, I will often correct it. So my le long leg is the, let's say the long leg is this side. Sure. The right side. I would actually take a heel wedge. Or if you, even as a trial, you can cut a piece of carpet out mm -hmm. and with a shape of a heel. Yeah. Put, put the heel wedge in your shoe or the carpet in your shoe and try walking around with it. Sure. And uh, and seeing if that raising it up, making you more equal, actually decreases your pain. Right. I'll have um, people usually go for a day. Sure. Unless it starts to irritate them, then immediately take it out because you don't want to force it. The other thing is if you're having SI problems, you want to make sure you're sitting correctly. Don't be one of those people that are sitting, like leaning over on one side most of the time. I do this as a habit. Yeah, uh, I when I, I like eat, this for whatever when I eat breakfast or lunch, I I always lean like this, and I have to just I don't know why I do that, and so I have to actually just lately I've been forcing myself to sit with even weight on my cheeks. Taking you sixty years that you've been uh, a therapist yeah, yeah. for thirty years, but 
Well, you know what's <laughs> what's so weird about this is, Brad? Honest yeah. to God. So because I was doing this, I was starting to stand and golf like this. Oh. And I had to correct it. That's what made me correct it. Then I was like. The golfing got you. The golfing got me. I was like, why am I standing so crooked? And it's because I was sitting crooked. Yeah. For... And we found that out, that sitting tends to shape your standing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah absolutely. So give this a try. You know, we're, we're showing you how to correct the high hip. We're also showing you how to correct the pain from a high hip. Right. You know, I'm the SI problem. So, which really is the only reason I would treat someone with sure. that is pain because you could have a high hip all your life. Your body's right. adapted to it and it's going to be fine. That's, uh, they've, they've, right. known, you know, so. So, really, the only reason to treat it, as Brad said, is because it, it is hurts. If there's pain, yes. Yeah. And remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything except for a broken heart. There you go, Bob. But we'll work on it. And it's got nothing to do with a pelvic problem. No. There's, there's a it's long a distance between there. And yeah. yeah, this video's not going to help that one. Danka. <laughs>